What's going, on, what's going on YouTube and what's going on Facebook? Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you. And like I said, I used to complain about the eye contact. I got this up here so I could look at both you guys. Now, I want to talk about today the military is in control. It's what a lot of people say. There's a lot of accounts that are pushing this theory that you need not fear, which is true. You don't need to fear. Um, but, you know, you don't have to do anything. Just sit back, kick back, relax. Trump's in control. The military's in control. And they're going to save your life with the secret plan that, you know, has been dragging out for a while. It's one of the biggest theories going on now on the right wing. And I want to talk about why I think it's a PSYOP. I'm going to use evidence, reality, stuff that people don't do anymore. Uh, I got a few other interesting things to say at the beginning. And I also picked up this book because I did a whole video on this maybe two months ago. And I quoted this book. It's called New Lies for the Old by Anatoly uh, Golitsyn. Sorry, I'm not Russian, so that's hard for me to pronounce. He's an ex-KGB officer who warned about how the communist deception threatens the West and what tactics and strategies that they used in order to take over and keep patriots at the time complacent. So I, I have, I'm going to read a little part of this book because I've been looking at it and also just uh, use some stuff. So that's what the story is about today. Please listen and consider. That's all I ask for is your consideration because I think um, sometimes being open-minded is just a talking point for some people. Like we want to question everything, but then you question them and they're like, who, who paid you to do that? It's like, dude, Relax. But also, I like how a lot of Christian conservatives always say, you know, you want to be open-minded, but you don't want to be so open-minded that your brain falls out. I think that's a pretty good quote. I don't know who says that. A lot of people uh, on my chat. Shout out to the dads, the moms, the grandmas, the grandpa with that old people wisdom. And I'm not talking old because, you know, kids look at me and say, you're old. So I'm not saying you're old, but I'm talking about that wisdom. You know, you're, you've been on this earth for a while. So you come to my channel and say, Anomaly. Be open-minded, but don't be so open-minded that your brain falls out. And I say, thank you. That's why we got to get these Grandma for Anomaly shirts going out. But anyway, uh, that's what it is today. Thank you guys for being here. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. We'll do some shout-outs. We got over 2,600 people here on Facebook. I appreciate you guys. Almost 500 people here on YouTube, and the numbers are going up. We got Diane Caps. We got Peace and Love. We got, let's see, uh, Becky. What's going on, Becky Fur? Appreciate you. Jamelia, we have Larissa Love. She said, I'm an old soul. We got John Roberts, not the John Roberts, but a John Roberts. He's the John Roberts to, in his life. But I was thinking of the guy. Isn't there a Supreme Court guy named John Roberts? Anyway, what's up, Rachel? What's going on? Someone in my chat said the black hats in the military are in control. That's why we're going to get into it. Listen, I, I'm in a good mood today. Hopefully that doesn't change. Sometimes, you know, I go from here to here and I get a little passionate. I get too jacked for the gulag, so I start pacing. I start, you know, sometimes I do some jumping jacks. I stretch out, but let's, let's keep it calm today for the kids, folks. No curses here. On Facebook and on YouTube, I try not to curse. Uh, sometimes I get a little passionate, not much, because some people say their kids watch. On Instagram, it's like watching Comedy Central past 10 o'clock. I apologize if you watch my Instagram. Sometimes people say, no, we don't curse. It's Instagram. It's like watching the Howard Stern show at 11.30 p.m. It's like you get what you get. You know, I, I apologize, but we keep it clean on the Facebook and the YouTube. I get a little bit, you know, more out of control on, on Instagram. I apologize, but I'm only human. Before I talk about is the military in control or just really just speculating that as a citizen, uh, I want to say two things that stuck out to me today real quick just for fun. The first one is I see a lot of left-wing activists going at Sean King today, and uh, I just think it's hilarious. Like all these like black activists and uh, liberals are really ticked off at Sean King, the guy who is lighter skinned than me and says that he's black or something, and you know does all this racial activism. I don't know if he really is or not, or he's lying. It's not really my thing, and I know he's so happy he likes to sh sue people when they get mad at him. So. I'm just kind of laughing at the fact that liberals and like black activists are just figuring out that Sean King's a terrible person. They're like, you know, I don't know what he did, but I just saw like liberal Twitter freak out at him. I'm like, welcome to the party. You know, we have a country full of pretty terrible people. He's got to be one of the worst people. Uh, no, no disrespect, but that's just how I feel. Uh, second thing I want to talk about is I saw Governor Abbott, before we get into the main story, I saw Governor Abbott tweet something about cases going down because they're rolling out the vaccine you know he said you know cases are going down in texas with the vaccine rollout something about you know pretty much just trying to say that that's the reason the cases are going down and i'm not saying it can't be related but all i'm saying is what a genius time to roll out the vaccine that's all i'm gonna say i'm not i'm not 
anti-vax, pro-vax. I'm not, I don't want to be labeled. I'm just a citizen speaking what I'm saying. You know, we have something called the flu season. And, and for the fact checkers, I'm not saying COVID is the flu. I'm just saying notoriously infectious diseases like colds, flus, and coronaviruses are really bad during the winter and they ease up during the spring and summer. That's not my opinion. That's like, you know, we have decades of data. That's why they used to call it the flu season. So they roll out this vaccine during springtime and then people like Governor Abbott, and I'm sure it's happening on the left wing too, you have this bipartisan, oh, look it, we're, oh, what a, what a brilliant way. Of course, you don't roll these out, you know, in uh, the fall, because then the numbers are gonna spike up because that's just what happens every uh, winter. And now as, as uh, cases are obviously gonna go down because they always go down pretty much like every time in history that, that we've ever studied, wow, it's, it's so effective, says both parties. We saved your life, now you can be free. Aren't you happy we locked you inside and destroyed your businesses for a year and now we gave you our product and, and, and it's all going away just coincidentally spring into summer? Oh, thanks so much. Bro. I'm like, I, I caught that real quick and I was like, what a shysty little shyster. For a lot. Listen, let's keep it clean for the kids. Calm down. All right. The main story I want to talk about today is uh, this theory that is it's, it's getting very popular and uh, you know, I like some competition. I like debate, discussion, but... I really thought in my head, because there was a lot of trust the plan, the military's in control, Trump's gonna be around, we have all these sealed indictments, and that means that all these people are going to prison, just wait, it's gonna happen on the 6th, it's March 4th. They keep pushing the date back, but I really thought after the election, I was like, you know what, I think a lot of people are gonna wake up once you know all this stuff doesn't happen, and they're gonna realize, like, listen, some of it was real, some of it was fake, but I, I can't have this biblical-like faith in human beings and politicians. It's just not a smart idea. I thought that was what was going to happen, but it seems like these theories have gotten even more popular over the last two months where there's a lot of influencers who pretty much just make a living, in my opinion, lying to people, telling them that the military's in control. Have no fear. Uh, you know, the military's got some secret plan to save America, and, and you just wait. And what I find interesting is, you know, we make fun of liberals all the time and say they're not living in reality. One plus one doesn't equal two. There's a million genders. You know, left isn't left, right isn't right, up isn't up, down isn't down. down. And psychologically, outside of politics, I think how they get people, if you can convince somebody that down is up, up is down, left is right, right is left, nothing that they see, observe, you know, basic facts, science, math, common sense, wisdom, all that stuff, none of that matters. Just listen to our critical race theory where one plus one equals 12, even though numbers and you know, how many fingers I'm holding up it has nothing to do with skin color. It's literally like one of the sciences that's supposed to be concrete. Like I have one, I have one, I have two. If, if you can convince someone that that doesn't matter, you can literally convince them to, I don't know, shut down their country for a year, wear masks, stick things up their anus. That's Sorry if your kids are watching, but that's just true. They're doing like anal swabs in China and stuff. So at a certain point, once you lose your ability to like reason with the real world, uh, they can convince you to literally do everything. And I think it's happening on the right wing now. If you're observing what's going on, uh, the military is not only not in control as if like they, you know, oversee the president or something like this is some sort of like a role play fantasy movie where you just sit and like eat popcorn and you're like, ooh, any minute now, Iron Man's going to pop out of the military. It's like, I guess if that makes you feel good to just make up like a role play sort of thing. But if you, if you actually look at what's going on. It's quite the opposite of what's happening is the military is actually uh, turning against conservatives. You have the military beefing with Tucker Carlson. You have the military beefing with Marjorie Taylor Greene. You know, some of the more outspoken, and I don't agree with Tucker and Taylor on everything, but you know, I think the reason Tucker's a, a, a target is for two reasons. First of all, if you look at the data, Tucker Carlson's one of the most popular TV hosts on television and also uh, you know, they used to use Trump as a scapegoat because Trump would bring in all their ratings. If you look at the ratings, Glenn Greenwald, who's actually a le uh, left-wing progressive, he posted them. Everybody on CNN, they're losing so much 20%, 30%, 15%. Tucker's the only one who only lost a little bit. He's the most popular news host and he, he's retaining an audience because he's actually good at what he does. I would say he's one of the only uh, journalists and, and real news hosts left on television. So they cling on to him like they cling on to Trump because that gets them ratings. Trump, 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 they, you know, I like Trump, I voted for Trump, 
But I can criticize Trump. I can talk about something else. I can still give views because people want to hear what I have to say because I'm not a total liar. They don't have anything to say, so they just cling on to Trump all the time. They hate him, and when he goes away, now they're just clinging on to Tucker Carlson because Tucker Carlson brings in eyes and nobody wants to watch them. These people are such pathetic losers. It's insane. Everything that Trump said about the media, he was not wrong. That's why people liked it. Uh, so they're, they're going after Tucker for that reason, but also... He's not a puppet. John Oliver, puppet. Trevor Noah, puppet. Jimmy Kimmel, puppet. They all read the script. People are mad at John Oliver. He's not writing what he says. He's got six, seven writers probably writing that, and he just reads it like a little weasel puppet, uh, you know, who gets millions of dollars to deceive the people. Tucker Carlson, on the other hand, he has writers, but he'll have on Tulsi Gabbard. He'll, he'll question the war in Iran and the war in Syria. He actually provides resi resistance to like a one media system where 100% of the people there just say that and think the same exact thing. So that's why they hate Tucker Carlson for multiple reasons. One, he gets a lot of views, but two, he's the best on television really at doing what he does and standing against both parties when they're wiling out. So if they could remove him from television, uh, you know, they have a communist style, 100% TV control. That's why they hate Fox and One American News Network. And I don't even like Fox that much, but I'm just saying they provide some sort of resistance to like a total thought control police state. But the point I'm getting to before I rattle on too much is that the, the military is not, not only not in control like they're secretly all conservative. At the lower levels, I'm guessing they're more conservative, but at the higher levels, it's the same thing with the FBI. It's the same thing with the government. It's the same thing with everything in, in, in politics. It seems like cultural Marxism is now taking over the military because the higher ranking generals are actually not on your side. They're actually working against you, tweeting about it. The Space Command, they're, all, they're beefing with conservatives. I'm gonna play this clip real quick of Tucker kind of just having a pretty funny monologue about that real quick, just for some humor value, because Tucker doesn't seem phased at all, and you gotta respect that. Well, it was quite an experience yesterday being the very first target in the Pentagon's new Operation Silence the Talk Show hosts. Friends called us in concern, are you guys all right? And for a minute, we'll concede we were almost rattled. Then we realized if the woke generals treat us like they've treated the Taliban, we'll be fine. 20 years later, the Taliban are still here. Maybe we ought to promise the Pentagon that we'll get rid of traditional gender roles on this show, change the pronouns, defeat the patriarchy, and all that. Then they'd send us billions in unmarked $100 bills as a reward. They've certainly done that before. And that might really kickstart our struggling opium poppy business. Something to think about. Anyway, we're fine. So uh, he's just trolling the, he's trolling the, you know, the deep state, I guess you could say, and just being like, you know, if they treat us like the Taliban and, you know, he's like, we'll be fine because they didn't really do anything to them. So you got to respect that from Tucker. But as far as, uh, you know, all these theories that have been going in the right wing, I'm open. I know about deeper stuff than like they, they tell on the news, but I try to be really accurate with what I'm saying. And I, and some of these influencers are telling people that the military's in control in this uh, fantasy way where it's like any minute the white hats in the military are gonna pop up and arrest all your enemies and you just sit there and, and don't worry about anything because the military and Trump has your back. And uh, you know, I think actually the opposite is true. I'm gonna read real quick a tweet that I said because it's almost a year from now. I said this in, uh, I guess, March 15th over a year ago before the shutdowns. I said, uh, the opposite of what they were pushing. I said, they're gonna use this to push medical tyranny, mandated vaccines, government mandated lockdowns, authoritarian power grabs, even bigger speech censorship, life will never be the same, and Trump doesn't have a magic plan to save you till the end of time. They tell you Trump has a magic plan, the military has a magic plan. I tell you, Trump doesn't have a magic plan, the military doesn't have a magic plan, and it's not a fear-mongering sort of thing. I'm not trying to bring fear. I just wanna let you know, outside of you know the religion or the God that you worship, you are in control of your own life. You are in control of your destiny. The American people, whenever they've achieved some sort of huge liberation for uh, freedom and liberty, it's been when enough people and leaders have stepped up to the occasion. You don't achieve liberty and freedom and justice and peace and all, the, all these sort of things that you want by just waiting and watching to see if somebody else does it for you. That's called a PSYOP. That's called a psychological operation to take conservatives and patriots and make them think that it's all secretly happening so they don't have to do anything. And uh, before I get into the, the book, New Lies for the Old, during March, April, May, June, July, you know, I, uh, not to harp on it, but we were trying to rally the troops and say, hey, 
It's time to just put your foot in the ground because I don't care if it's Trump, Biden, what Operation War Speed, all this closing and stuff. It's it just doesn't seem like a good idea. And then it wasn't just the military's in control. It was like trust the plan, just trust Trump. He's got a plan for us. And this strategy has been used in Bolshevik and communist uh, regimes before to keep uh, patriots complacent. Because if you think about it, what better way? Say I'm doing all this crazy stuff. I'm consolidating power. I'm essentially enslaving humanity and enslaving the people of the United States. I'm locking you down. I'm, I'm, I'm adding all these new regulations. I'm consolidating power, corporate power, government power. It's pretty much just a total takeover of society. Would you want one? all the patriots and conservatives to be like, hey, this is not right. We don't care if it's Governor Abbott. We don't care if it's DeSantis. We don't care if it's Trump. We don't care if it's Gavin Newsom. This is just not right. You know, we the American people, we're going to vote for you, Trump. We're going to vote for you, Abbott, maybe. But we don't like what's going on. Of course, they don't want that. What they want is people to think that there's something else. It's like it's like dangling a carrot and getting like a military to just run off a cliff. You know, it's it's the perfect strategy. I just want to read because I actually bought the book. It's called uh, New Lies for the Old by Antoli Golian. And he was a ex-KGB officer who was trying to warn the West about communism. Great. Did I lose my little my little tag? Oh, here it is. And uh, I'm just going to read a, a chapter of it because they actually did the same exact thing during the communist and Bolshevik revolution using generals, the same thing that's going on. They're using General, I don't know, his name starts with an M and General Flynn. They're like, Anomaly, you, you don't know anything. I mean, it's coming. It's coming on March 4th and then it doesn't come on March 4th. And they say, oh, just wait, it's January 20th. Oh, no, 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 no. We have generals giving us secret intel that the... The military is not only not in control of the country, the military is in control of whoever is controlling them. And who's controlling them right now is liberals, Marxists, people who don't like you. OK, so either you realize this and you stand your ground and you, you know, or you just like run in circles. You're like, tee hee 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 hee, I'm getting sick. This has been done before. This is called uh, Operation Trust from the Bolshevik communist takeover of uh, Russia. He said, these agents confided in their context that the anti-Soviet monarchist movement that they represented was now well established in Soviet Russia, had penetrated to the highest levels of the army, the security service, and even the government, and would in time take power and restore the monarchy. They convinced the emigre leaders that the regime had undergone a radical change. Communism had completely failed. The ideology was dead. The present leaders had nothing in common with the fanatical revolutionaries of the past. They were nationalists at heart, and their regime was evolving into a moderate national regime and might soon collapse. The NEP should be seen as the first important concession on the road to restoring capitalism in Russia. Soon political concessions would follow. Because of this, said the trust agents, any intervention or gesture of hostility from the European powers uh, would be ill-advised, if not tragic, since it would only unite the Russian people around their government and so extend its survival. Um, they also said naturally there were doubters among them, but the pr prestige of the leaders of the organization, particularly of General Bresvalov, convinced the majority. They accepted at face value the trust's disinformation and passed it on to their influential friends in the European intelligence services. So, uh, actually I'll keep reading because it gets more interesting. By the time it had been circulated to the governments as secret intelligence, it sounded most impressive. And when it, at time, uh, and when as time went on, the same story was confirmed by source after source, it became secret and reliable. The intelligence services of Europe were committed to it, and it was unthinkable that they could be wrong. This is the same exact thing that the Q people and the trusted military are saying. Same exact thing. They said, listen, you don't want to defend yourself. You don't want to be concerned for your freedom. You don't want to put your foot down because that would be a bad idea because the military already has a control. The military is in control. Just sit back, relax, trust Trump. He's the shadow president or whatever they say. I mean, ignore the fact that we were wrong about January 20th. Ignore all these disinformation agents like the guy on Alex Jones. What was his name? He said uh, Biden would be arrested on the 20th. Ignore the fact that he completely lied about that. Do, do you guys know his name? He was on Alex Jones' show getting millions of views. He said, Alex, I want a television show on your network if you know, Biden's going to be arrested on the 20th. And Alex Jones said, I'll give you, I'll give you your own show if you're right. He was wrong. Where is that guy? I have no idea. I blocked him on Twitter because I was creeped out by the fact he was following me. 
Uh, you had General Flynn who said, I'm 100% sure, 10 out of 10 sure, that Trump will remain in office on the 20th. He said this on the 5th, right before the big setup day of the 6th. So you have generals and, and ex, you know, military, ex uh, intelligence community people, people like Simon Parks who talk about being birthed by aliens or something and his parents were involved in the intelligence communities. These people are leading the charge of patriots and Trump supporters, military generals, ex uh, intelligence community members, and alien birth childs who had parents who worked with MI6 and CIA or whatever he claims on his, what? that's who's leading the charge of uh, telling you that the military's in control when observable reality tells you that the military ideologically at the top brass, I'm not talking about the bottom brass, at the top brass, they not only don't agree with you, but they're weaponizing politically the military against leaders that actually think for themselves like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Tucker Carlson, maybe you know two of the conservatives in power that actually might do something, you know, because all these other people are just phonies. Like they, Steve Piesnik, yeah, exactly, that guy said that Trump, uh, Biden was going to be arrested on the 20th. So this is a strategy that's been done before because if conservatives and patriots could, one, organize, which now they can't really easily anymore after what happened on the 6th, uh, you know, that was a, a, a nightmare for multiple reasons. But, you know, uh, what better way to keep these people at bay than just telling them that the and it's been done by Bolsheviks. So I want people to check that out, research it, and really consider it. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm watching some of these channels and stuff, and I, I just find it fascinating. I'm like, man, they're, they're, they're telling people literally the opposite of what's happening. So you have millions of uh, conservatives who are just like waiting for someone else to save them. And I also want to say a few other things real quick. First of all, uh, a lot of these people are Christians or leading a bunch of Christians. And I just want to say, you know, if you're a Christian, this right here is the Holy Bible, okay? Uh, that's your book. It's not the QAnons. It's not the Trust the Plan. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to have godlike faith in a message board that hasn't even posted in three months, that the first initial post was literally a false prediction and all sorts of like scrambled, you know, fortune cookie codes, mixture of real things and fake things and disinfo. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say to worship politicians like a deity or an idol. It doesn't say that at all. And it certainly doesn't like liars or people who, you know, fabricate. It doesn't like false prophets. So if you're a Christian, you know, you have a book already. I'm not saying that you shouldn't research other information, but, you know, following a false religion that tells you to trust in the idea that the military is going to save your life is ridiculous. Um, second of all, I just want to say certain things because I've countered some of these false narratives for years now and i've gotten more backlash almost more than i've gotten from liberal press and uh during the lockdown i want to say operation trust as i'll call it trust the plan it's the same thing as the bolsheviks operation trust the most backlash i got for standing against the lockdowns didn't come from the left wing i think it's because they're afraid of me because i'm so concise and so rational with my talking that I'm not an easy target, okay? I'm not like a Tommy Laren for the left wing. I'm not like a Hodge twins. No disrespect to Tommy or the Hodge twins. I'm just saying they're more like bang, bang, bang in your face. And I, I find it enjoyable. But, you know, that's an easier target. I'm not an easy target because I'm, I'm chiller and I really calculate my words. So for the most part, I feel like they stay away because if they step in the arena with me, it's not going to go well for them. But in general, some of the most backlash I got during April when I was sounding the alarm about Fauci, about the lockdowns, about Sweden, about herd immunity, all this stuff was from Q people. And they'll always deny a lot of these people who follow that stuff. They have this like weird egotistical thing where they can never admit of what they really did, even though I have receipts. It's like, we never did that. And I'm like, bro, you guys thought the lockdown was a good idea at first. Not anymore, but at first, of course they did, because if you follow the Q drops, for two years, it was conditioning people to think that martial law and some sort of military takeover of the country was going to be when the pedophiles got arrested. So naturally, when the lockdown happened, most people were like, you know what? We should be cautious about locking down our businesses. And the Q people said, oh, no, we, we know what this is. We've been Operation Trusted. They've told us about this for three years. So when military takes over, you know, this is the good. This is good. The White Hats are in control. The military is in control. Trust the plan. So when I was naturally saying, hey, I'm not trying to fear monger, but I don't think this lockdown is the good guys. I think it's the bad guys. They, you don't know. You don't watch Q. You never trust the plan. It's like these people are brainwashed just as hard as uh, people who watch the media. That's why they call the media Blue Anon, which I think is hilarious. And then the, the, these people Q Anon. It's not... Everything the media doesn't say is a lie, but most of it is. 
everything QAnon doesn't say is a lie, but a lot of it is, and it's scrambled people's brains where they, they think like lockdowns, martial law, and military control are gonna lead them to heaven or something. I mean, it's like a false satanic religion at this point. So anyway, they were bashing me in, a, in April and May for opposing the lockdown. In June and July, they copied all my work and started railing against Fauci because they figured out they were wrong. Only one of them apologized to me, but the point I'm getting to is they have this way, kind of like the left, to use things as shields. When you, when, you, when you go after certain narratives that they say, like, hey, I agree with you on this, this, and this, but I don't agree with you on this, they have this way of like spiraling and straw manning. So with the left, I'll give you an example first to kind of ease up on it. You know, if you say something about Black Lives Matter burning down a business, they'll be like, oh, you don't like black people? Oh, you, you, you don't, you know, you're racist. So they have this way of like straw manning arguments. Like, if I agree with, if I disagree with political violence, you're gonna call me racist. If I don't like Kamala Harris, you're gonna say I hate women. It's like, no one likes Kamala Harris, let's be honest. She couldn't even finish like top five in the Democratic Party. But, you know, it's called the straw man. When someone has a sound argument and you can't defeat the actual argument, you make up a side argument, say, oh, you said this, and you're like, and I never said that. So with the Q people, what they do is if, say you say the, the mil, you think the military's in control, even though the top brass of the military is against conservatives at this point, they'll be like, huh, you, you don't wanna save the children? You don't wanna save the children? And, and I wanna explain real quick why this is so cowardly. It's bad enough that you guys make up so many fake theories, the military's in control, trust the plan, you know, Trump's gonna save us till the end of the time, he's the shadow president, there's two constitutions. It's bad enough that you guys suck at predicting. At this point, a monkey with a dart could be more accurate. You just flip a coin, it's 50%. You guys are batting like 45%, but you're such narcissistic lunatics that you think you're batting 100% because you never admit when you're wrong. But in general, it's like, it's bad enough that your theories about the military being in control sucks, but you're, you're using human trafficking as a shield to block people from debating your other points. The military in control and all these other dumb theories have nothing to do with human trap. You think they do, but it's the same as like the left wing using blacks and Hispanics as a shield. If you disagree with human trafficking and you disagree with border security, you hate Mexican kids. And it's like, no, I, I my, you know, part of my family's Mexican through, you know, uh, marriage, not through ethnicity. I'm part Puerto Rican, but in general, it's like, I have Mexican siblings. I don't hate Mexican. I just believe in you know, border security and border security actually stops human trafficking. So the left will use this straw man as like a shield and it's very cowardly. It's like what a terrorist does. They put someone on the front and say, if you attack me, you attack this. That's what the Q people do. They, they say, if you don't agree with one of my 30 really stupid theories that are so provably untrue and, and I'm following literally disinfo agents like ex, you know, uh, ex intelligence community people and false generals, uh, you don't want to save the children. It's so embarrassing and it's so, it's so, in my opinion, wicked. It's like, have a debate with me, but to use children, you're not, you're not saving children, you're using human trafficked kids as a shield to stop people from drilling through your misinformation. And it's so cowardly and it's so wicked. Uh, and I find that that's like the one thing that they try to guilt people with when they do that. So now I was on Instagram live earlier. Someone said audio's glitching. I don't, hold on one second. Hold on, is it, how's the, hold on one second, I apologize. How's the audio now? Is it better? Give me a thumbs up if it's better. I, I'm just like pushing it in. Is it, okay, I hear you on, is it, give, give me a, give me a thumbs up if it's better. It's crackling? Okay. If it's crackling, I don't know what I could really do. All right, I, I mean, I could try to unplug and replug or something, but I apologize. It's better? It's worse now. I mean, I don't know what to really do about it. All right, I, I could try to unplug it and replug it, but it might kind of screw up. I'll try this, but it might screw up the whole live stream. Hold on. All right, I just replugged it in. Give me a thumbs up. Sorry about this on Facebook, but give me a thumbs up if, uh, if it's better on YouTube. Better or no? No, it's a brand new cord. I don't know what it is. All right. Sorry about that, YouTube. I'm going to have to just keep going up. It's muted now. All right, I'm going to end the... I'm just ending the YouTube stream, and I'm just going to do Facebook. So I apologize uh, with the YouTube. I guess I'm cut off of that, but...
That's a little disappointing. Maybe I'll have to redo the live stream, but I'll just stay on Facebook for now. Anyway, yeah, um, people ask me on Instagram live stream, they're like, you know, what are you doing to save the children and, and et cetera, where I'm saying, if you really are concerned about that, I would say, you know, start a group or start a movement or, or some sort of uh, business that fights for human traffic kids and, uh, you know, stuff like that, or find a really good one. There's a few in this country, probably not that many, but find a good organization that actually, you know, does something about it, but just constantly speculating on ships saving people and constantly speculating on any day now, sealed indictments are gonna be turned or Trump's gonna come back through the shadow president. I don't think that's actually helping or rescuing children. So, you know, that was kind of the point I made. I noticed that they did that a lot to me. It's like, obviously human trafficking is real. Obviously child trafficking is real. Obviously it's a way bigger problem than they're admitting. Obviously with the Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell stuff, it's super big and the media doesn't wanna talk about it. I don't disagree on any of that stuff, but at the same time, it's like people use that as a shield, barely ever talk about it, and then have just turned this into like a ego fest for their own you know, audience to just constantly kick the can down the road and do the same thing that the, uh, that the Bolsheviks did, which is make a whole side theory that never comes true to take millions of patriots who normally would stand your ground, you know, hold your ground and say, this is unacceptable in America, condition them and brainwash them to say, oh, no, 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 this is all part of the plan. We trust, we trust the military, we trust Trump, we trust Biden, even though we don't trust Biden, but we trust the fact that someone is over Biden that likes us. It's like the people puppeting Biden, I don't think they like you guys. I'm just gonna be honest. I don't think anybody in the Biden administration looks at Trump supporters and people who follow Q and says, man, this is a, this is, uh, this is really good. Um, I'm just gonna read this real quick. Someone said, why would General Flynn acknowledge Q? He, he wears a where we go one, we go all bracelet. Well, I'm not gonna speak on him particularly because I don't know him, his intentions, but I'm just saying, if, if you read New Lives for the Old, Operation Trust in, in the book, in the Bolshevik Revolution, in the Communist Revolution, they used generals to establish trust because if there weren't certain people involved, people wouldn't trust it as easily. So this, this has already been done before. If you look up General Flynn, and I'm not trying to knock him, I'm sure he's a nice guy. If you look up his past, he worked in the Obama administration. And uh, you know he said that 10 out of 10, he was 100% sure that Trump was gonna remain in office. He said this on January 5th. So I've already caught General Flynn, no offense, feeding people false lies and false hopes. It's one thing if he says, cause he's a general, you gotta understand when General Flynn speaks, People listen, because you would think this guy has intel. You know, he's got really good insight on what's going on. You know, it's General Flynn. So if he looks into the camera on Alex Jones and says, I'm 10 out of 10 sure that Trump will remain in office, people will buy it, right? He's a general, he's not gonna lie to you. He's not saying 90% sure, I'm not. He says, I'm 100% sure 10 out of 10, Trump will remain in office. And he was right, he lied, that was a lie. So. Why are you following a general that's already lied to you? When you know that in the past, they've used generals to push a counter Bolshevik revolution psyop to convince a bunch of patriots and nationalists that the military was in control. This is not out of the norm. And I don't wanna name names, but it's like, if you go to Simon Parks' website, he's leading this whole cabal. He admits that his parents worked with intelligence communities, you know? Steve Piesnek, who lied on, uh, on Alex Jones' show and said that he's 100% sure that Biden was gonna be arrested, he has you know, a past in the US government as well. I don't wanna like beef with these people, because honestly, I just want these people and everybody to leave me alone. But you know, at, at, at a certain point, you have to realize if somebody lies to you and says they're 100% sure about something that ever happens and they never admit to it and they wear a bracelet on their arm, I don't know, uh, I don't think that really matters. I think, you know, it's like people were worshiping Mike Pompeo for a while. A lot of these cute people were, were worshiping, I don't know if you guys caught it, but his Twitter, uh, Mike Pompeo, before he left as a secretary of state, he was tweeting about, uh, you know, every 30 minutes, every 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. So all the trust the plan, the military are in control, psyop people, they were like, whoa, he's trying to send us a secret code because he's tweeting every 30 minutes. I've worked in social media before and I think anybody who has, it's kind of obvious. 
scheduling posts every 30 minutes is not rare. It's not like this crazy coded thing. It's just like whoever his intern was or whoever worked at social media was just scheduling posts every 30 minutes. It's not like this crazy thing. It's like a lot of companies do that. Just 30 minutes on the hour, schedule posts. I could go in and schedule a week's worth of posts today and I don't even have to touch my computer. It's not hard to do. So they were like worshiping Mike Pompeo like a deity, thinking he was gonna send, he never sent a code because he was never doing that. He was just scheduling his accomplishments to try to, you know, I think for the record, uh, prove to everybody what he did in, in the Trump administration, which is fine. But it's like, Mike Pompeo was also the CIA director. There's one uh, video of him where he said, you know, when I was at West Point, they told us, you know, never cheat, never lie, never steal. And he was like, when I was in the CIA, we did the opposite of that. We lied, we cheated, we stole. He said something like that and everybody cracked up. So it's like, you guys are worshiping like a like a deity and a god these people who work in the military worked in the obama administration and were the heads of the central intelligence agency where they admit that that they that's what they do they do intelligence counterintelligence they lie they, like that's not what i'm saying that's you know you can find a video of uh, mike pompeo saying that so it's one thing to appreciate him i think overall he did a pretty good job in office i'm not a i'm not a hater but it's like I don't know who told everybody to, to worship these people, especially if you're a Christian, like a lot of them are, this is your book. It's not following ex intelligence community people when they, you know, post every 30 minutes. Someone said thoughts on Lynn Wood. He seems like a nice guy, but he, here's my threshold. And I think, uh, you know, I, I don't remember the Bible quote. I think it's in Luke, but there's a, there's a quote that says, Something along the lines of like, if somebody's gonna lie to you about this, this, and this, uh, they'll lie to you about this, this, and this. So, you know, that was like the gist of the quote. It's like, you know, someone who lies about certain things will lie about other things. And I find that that's true. So with Lynn Wood, I think he seems like a good, great lawyer. He seems like a nice guy. I have nothing against him personally, but I've seen him lie so many times. And I, I, you know, I'm not impressed with like, me personally, I do journalism, I do analysis. so. I'm more impressed with people who have a good track record of not lying. You know, like he posted a fake article, conservative beaver of a hoax saying that the Pope was arrested. It never happened. He posted a hoax and then he deleted it. He posted a fake picture of Nancy Pelosi writing to Ted Wheeler about Portland and Antifa. It was so obviously Photoshopped. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing. Like it's like a boomer mistake or something like, a, you know, like grandpa doesn't know how to use a computer. Like he posted it to his parlor and then, he, you know, saying, I think, you know, Mike Pence might get executed. It's like, the dude is all over the place. Sometimes he's on point. Sometimes he posts hoaxes. Sometimes he lies. Sometimes he makes bad predictions. So what do I think of Lynn Wood? I think his ego is way bigger than his accuracy rating. I think he's a really smart guy. I think he probably has good intentions, but I think his ego is this big and his, uh, you know, his desire to accurately report and say things is, is smaller than his ego. So you're going to get... 75% truth bombs, 25% disinformation, and it's gonna be scattered with him on Telegram saying, truth, I'm the truth, speak the truth, the truth is the truth, and I'm the truth, truth, truth. It's like, he could say truth a million times, but at a certain point, once I catch you lying three or four times, I'm not gonna like, you know, I have, other, I have bigger fish to fry than like running in circles around him. So once again, when I say this type of stuff, I'm not, I'm not saying that everything these people say is wrong. I'm just like, I've seen them lie. They're unapologetic. And I think they have like this narcissistic ego complex where if I make a mistake, I'm, I like to be corrected. You know, there's an old saying, uh, a smart person, if you correct them, they're appreciative and grateful. A fool gets mad at you for correcting them. So it's like, you know, I, I don't know who these people are that they constantly just lie and then like never admit to doing it and just like keep pushing forward and going after like everybody who questions them. It's like, I don't know. It, it reminds me of just like a, an ego out of control. Someone said he got sucked into Q. And that's the thing with, say like, if you listen to uh, Yuri Bezmenov, this is another good one. Yuri Bezmenov is a, uh, you know, former KGB agent and he kind of explained how the KGB works with their four stages, de you know, uh, destabilization, crisis, how they destroy a country. He said that they were looking for liberals like filthy rich movie makers, people that were so egotistical that they were able to infiltrate and push their agenda through. And at a certain point, if you have generals, movie makers, top people like General Flynn, whoever, Lynn Wood, whatever you want to say, once you can, you know, it starts to be like a, 
an effect of like, it just spirals out of control. Once you can plant enough seeds, uh, it takes a life of its own. The example being Marxism in America. At the beginning of Marxism in America, they had to infiltrate. Now, China, Russia, whoever you wanna say, communists all over the world, they don't, they don't have to do anything anymore. You know, it's, it, they just have to sit back and America's gonna destroy itself. I mean, our own health agencies, our own schools, our own media, our own culture, everything is already uh, against us. So, you know, it's like once you plant enough seeds, people start sabotaging themselves. And I think that's what's going on with the Q stuff where it's like, you know, maybe Lynn Wood got sucked in too much because some of it's real. It's like human trafficking is real. So they give you some things that are true and then they mix it with all this like brain scrambling stuff. So I, I find personally, it, it seems to attract people with like huge egos that want to feel more important than they are. Like, I don't think I'm that special. I'm grateful for what I've been able to achieve. I'm very appreciative. But like when I talk to you, I don't talk to you like you guys are dummies, or I, I try not to, hopefully. I mean, sometimes I get a little passionate, but it's like, if I show you, I try to show you what I'm, like, I, here's what I read, here's, here's the stuff that I do, you could do it too. When you listen to these people, the, the whole thing is based off of like, you being submissive to them. Like, I could never do what they do because they have all this secret intel. They don't have secret intel, but like Lynn Wood, Maybe he thought he was special enough to receive secret military info from a message board. If it's, through, if it's through a message board, it's not secret. I mean, it was so obvious even in 2018, a lot of my friends in the Trump world fell for it. And I said, listen, there's a lot of good information there. You know, there's good research going on, but why would the military, if it's a secret plan to sneak up on the elites, why would they tell you three years in advance and then you guys are telling everybody all over social media? If they were gonna do something to Mike Pence, which they obviously didn't, why would Lynn Wood say it publicly? You think there's something secretive about Lynn Wood screaming it to 10 million people and everybody covering it? Of course not. If the military was really gonna do a secret tribunal, no one would talk about it because it would be secret. And then when it happened, you'd either know about it or you wouldn't know. There's no strategic advantage to getting Lynn Wood and uh, you know Simon Parks to, to scream at the top of their lungs for four years about it. Then it never happens. It's a psyop. But I think that's how it worked enough people bought into it and then it just became like, now you have people that have huge platforms that are now passing this information on to everybody else. And you know, it's like, it, it's become a thing like Marxism where it's just like, once the disinformation gets so strong into a movement, you could just sit back. Q hasn't posted in four months. There's been no posts. You know, it's, it's, other, it's people who followed and worshiped him passing this disinformation on to others now. Someone said, okay, I missed something. Why are you so butthurt? Well, that's just a straw man argument anyway. I mean, you could watch the video back if you want, but I'm, I would say I'm like less upset and more calm than I've been in like 20 live streams. So it's like, that's just a straw man argument to try to assassinate my character for making a point you don't want to hear. Do I, do I seem butthurt? I would say I seem like irrationally or, you know, abnormally relaxed in this live stream. But, you know, if you need to do that for your own ego or something, that's fine. I'll read a few comments and then I'll take off. I apologize to people on uh, YouTube. I don't know exactly what happened, but it, uh, I guess my audio went out, which is unfortunate. This is like a brand new microphone or a couple months old. Adam said, you obviously haven't thought this through. I, I have thought, so I've thought it through and I'm just, I'm just gonna tell you, guys, this is not a new strategy. During the Bolshevik Revolution, where they did a lot of the same things they're doing now and ended up killing two million people. Luckily today, this is more of a digital takeover, so they're not killing people, but they did the same thing, guys, the same exact thing. Put out a disinformation operation to get a bunch of conservatives, patriots, and nationals to trust a secret plan that military generals were gonna save their life. When in reality in this country, the people, since last April, they said, don't worry guys, this lockdown's part of the plan. Tom Hanks could never escape now. Oprah has an ankle bracelet on. Ellen DeGeneres has an ankle monitor. Do you really think they need to lock the whole country down to arrest Ellen DeGeneres? Are you guys joking me? Like, this is the type of crap I've put up with for three and a half years now. I've debated Jordan Sather, I've debated Praying Medic. I warned people four years ago, I said, it sounds like you guys are pro martial law and pro big government takeover. As a conservative and a libertarian, are you not a little bit worried that if the government does take over the military, that it's not a good thing? And they said, well, we trust Q. You don't even know who the person is. And they duped you into thinking that uh, 
uh, martial law and military takeover is going to save you. So when the lockdown happened, naturally all those people thought it was a good thing. And they all harassed me and, and treated like the passive aggressive, oh, something's wrong with you. You haven't thought it through. You're, you're so butthurt. Same stuff. Same stuff they did in April when I was right and they were wrong. They do people into thinking the lockdown was their secret strategy to arrest Ellen and Tom Hanks. Why would they have to lock you in your house in order to do that? This is a PSYOP, folks. This is a controlled disinformation campaign or just a joke on out of control that's now working as a, a disinformation campaign that's convincing patriots, Trump supporters, Christians, and conservatives to worship a false idol and to believe that there's a plan outside of the Bible to save them. If you want to believe in a happy ending and you're a Christian, I suggest looking at, you know, the Bible. If you're a Christian and you're worshiping this idea that Trump is the shadow president and, uh, you know, that the, the military secretly in control and they're going to like pop out and arrest all the pedophiles any day, I would say you probably need to seek help at this point because it, it's gone past the point of an idea. Is it okay to speculate that justice might be served in this country? Of course. Hopefully one day that they do something about the Epsteins and the Ghislaine Maxwells. I'm not... I'm not pessimistic about anything, but at a certain point, my life doesn't revolve around making crap up for three years and just moving the goalposts. It's like there's no, there's zero strategic advantage to doing that. The only one who's benefiting from that is the people you guys claim to fight. They're using you guys as a honeypot to arrest people, to call people terrorists, to label people crazy, to use as a straw man for everything that they want and say, oh, Gavin Newsom. He's only getting uh, recalled by the Q people. They're just using you guys, and you guys run and chase the carrot anywhere, so you guys are easy to abuse. I could just make up, there's a ship off the coast of Venezuela that's saving the pedophiles and Tom Hanks, and then you guys go, ar, ar, ar. There's no, it's, it's too easy, because you guys, the whole movement's based on being so egotistical that you think you're being fed secret military intel through anonymous YouTubers and bitch shoot users that won't show their face, because they're not who they say they are, and they're probably little dweebs who are either getting paid to do it or just making so much money lying to you, and they have just as big as an ego as the people listening to them. I'm not butthurt, I just, I've said this for three years. Someone said goalposts get moved for clandestine reasons. Well, it's, it's, the, same, it's, a, it's the same story on the left and the right. Fauci controls the left wing. Mm, two masks. Mm, you could be free with the vaccine. Actually, you should wear a mask with the vaccine. Actually, maybe 2022, maybe 2023, Fauci moves the goalposts on the left and QAnon moves the goalposts on the right. Oh, it's gonna happen uh, in 2018. You know, I mean, it's some people, maybe they don't know or they don't think, but I've debated and had like discussions with some of the top Q decoders in 2018. I said to Praying Medic, I was like, Will you ever like will you ever stop doing this like if it does if a certain thing doesn't happen and he was like He admitted if Trump doesn't win the second term and it doesn't happen before that it probably he's probably doesn't believe it He said that in 2018 when I debated him Trump didn't win it didn't happen, and they never stop You know a lot of these people I follow on Instagram said if, if March 4th doesn't bring Trump back into office I'll stop doing this and guess what? It's March 16th and they don't stop because they, they don't have a reason to stop. They get money and attention and uh, they feel like superior, like, oh man, any day now. They, they'll never stop lying. But it's okay. I'm just here letting you know, if you read this book or, or you listen to, to the chapter I read you, this is this literally word for word the same thing. And it, it shouldn't take a, you know, it, it doesn't take an IQ 10,000 to understand how this would be used, you know? I mean, in April, same sort of story. I tried to say respectfully, maybe it came off wrong, but I was like, God, everybody was waiting for Trump. They were operation trusting the plan. Even people that didn't even know what trust the plan was, they were just trusting Trump. I told people, it doesn't matter if you like or dislike Trump, you have to stand up for your um, amendments. If you don't believe in what's happening, you should be more motivated to stand up to Trump because he'll actually help you. But if you stand up to Biden, you probably won't get results that easily. If you stand up to Trump, him and his family, in my opinion, they're way realer. I mean, look at Don Jr. He just shared an article about Fauci yesterday that used my uh, Twitter uh, you know, video of Kerry Mullis. He's way realer than Biden. So if you would have stood up to Trump, it would have been fine, but this this is this is the problem. It's not just with the trust the military people, it's with a lot of Trump supporters in general. They've turned 
you know, their deity into Trump or into Q or into the military and General Flynn. So they, they don't have like an opinion or a backbone or a stance on anything. It's all just weight. And that's what the enemy would want to do. Because it's like, say you're in the, you know, metaphorically, say you're in a war. If you're 100% of your troops are standing firm, they're not going to lose. If you can convince 50% of the troops to just wait for someone else to do it, and the other 30% to follow a leader that's not doing what they're thinking, you just, you just exhausted 80% of the troops. That's what happened last year. If people weren't waiting for Trump to do something, they were waiting for Q to do something or whatever Q said Trump was going to do. So they've, they've turned the conservative Christian movement into mush, you know? That's, that, it, it's an obvious, what's the benefits of waiting for the military to save you when all reality says that the military is being controlled at the high levels by left-wingers who don't like you. I mean, just look at what they're doing to Tucker Carlson and uh, MGT. That's not them in control. That's them being weaponized against you because a Democrat's in office and they will replace the top generals with people who support their agenda. It's, it's so obvious, but I mean... Someone said, bro, you all talk, you, re you wrecked your credibility. I, I mean, no, I really haven't. I, not at all actually but what i allow people to have the the stage like if you want to name something i said that is wrong and explain why you're right let's start with that you saying i wrecked my credibility one it's not true i would say my work speaks for itself and and the uh the amount of people who are sharing it and receiving that information is at an all-time high so it's not there is no credibility problem with me but it's like that's that's just like an attack on my character that has like zero, if I'm in a debate and I'm like, what do you, okay, I said all that. What do you think about that? Oh, you have no reputation. That doesn't mean, like, I, that's not what I said about the other people. I just explained why I don't trust them or why, you know, why I think it's a lie. So I'll give you, I'm gonna read this real quick. Someone said, if Don Jr. is slamming Fauci now, where was he the whole time his dad wouldn't get rid of him? No, I, I agree. I mean, I think that's the energy that people need to have. That's like, you know, it's, it's really just like human nature. If enough, if there's enough pressure peacefully on politicians, they'll do something. They don't, Trump has all these people to worry about and Biden is not even in control uh, of his own stuff. But in general, it's like we, the people, they don't fear you and they definitely don't, uh, you know, it's like they'll worship whatever I do, you know, in the equation of business. They don't even have you in mind because it's like, oh man, they'll believe anything I do. You know, I could do, I could do Operation Warp Speed and uh, they'll eat it up. I mean, to me, that's the most obvious part of the PSYOP. If you go to these accounts, all these influencers, I won't name names, but you know who they are. If you go to all these influencers who talk about the military's in control and they push all these PSYOP false theories about it, they don't agree with... Uh, Vaccine, mass vaccinations. Most of them don't. I would say like 80 to 95% of them don't agree with it at all. I'm not saying what you should believe. I'm just saying in that world, I would say they're more anti, uh, you know, Pfizer, Moderna stuff than, than most Trump supporters are in the Q militaries in control world. But none of them will say a single thing about Operation Warp Speed. And Operation Warp Speed, no matter how much they BS, no matter how much they lie and deceive, was Trump signing off and, uh, you know, I guess Congress, whoever else signs off on it, on the funding of AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, all these companies, Johnson & Johnson, funding, buying billions of dollars of purchases and funding for them to rush out this warp speed vaccine. So what do, what do the Q people believe? They don't believe in anything they claim to believe in. They believe in worshiping Trump like an idol. Their worship of QAnon and Trump supersedes reality, the truth, or anything that Trump does against it. So how do you not see that it's a PSYOP? Normally these people would say, I don't agree with Operation Warp Speed, but you've convinced, and I'm, I don't use this word lightly, anti-vax or whatever, because it's a BS word, but you've convinced people who are skeptical of vaccines, like holistic moms and even you know people who've had their kids injured, you've convinced them to worship a message board letter which tells you that Trump is fighting the vaccine when he's really funding it. So they've brainwashed you know, holistic moms to worship a program that they ideologically completely disagree with. That's what the Q stuff did. Name one of these accounts that says the military's in control 
that will accurately tell you where the money for Operation Warp Speed went. I mean, do you not see Trump when he speaks? He says, I did Operation Warp Speed. Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson Johnson, they're good companies. I gave them all this money. It's okay to disagree with Trump. It's okay to say, I like Trump, he's better than Biden. I agree with that or I disagree with that. That's fine. But what's really weird is saying, I like Trump, he's my God, and even though he's doing something that I'm diametrically opposed to, I'm just gonna hallucinate that it's not happening. That's like a mental illness. And I'm not trying to be rude, but it's like, it's, it's as brainwashed as a liberal. It's operation trust of the right wing. It's getting the right wing to be complacent, uh, wait for generals to do something, the same thing they did during communist Russia. All right, I'm gonna read a few more and then I gotta take off in 10 minutes. I apologize to people who watched on YouTube. I don't know what happened, but maybe I'll have to re-upload it or something, re-upload this to YouTube. Someone said, I'm a Trump supporter, but I'm, I'm against that. I, don't, I disagree with Operation War Speed. And that's all it takes though. That, that's why this is such a psyop. Because if 100% of Trump supporters said, I like you don't have to hate him. I like you, I disagree with that. He would consider it, but you, you have so many people that will worship this idea that it's not what it is because they don't believe anything anymore. It's wild. But yeah, I don't know. I, I just wanted to make my case at least today for like literally the opposite of everything that they've been saying. It's like they, they don't have any accuracy about anything. In uh, last year, 2019, a bunch of CEOs stepped down. I don't know if you guys remember, but hundreds, thousands of CEOs stepped down, more CEOs than ever before stepped down. And I said then, I, I said the opposite of what they said. They said, oh, that means they're getting arrested. Everything in their head, they don't analyze anything properly or accurately. It all goes back to the PSYOP that they think the military's in control and there's a secret plan for them when there's not. So they lie about literally almost everything. They said the CEOs stepped down because there's a secret plan to arrest the pedophile. So if they step down, that means they're getting arrested. Everybody believed it. Everybody in Q world and trust the military world, that was the biggest theory. I was one of the only people that said, I think it means the opposite. I think they probably knew something bad was gonna happen. So what happens when you step down as a CEO? You can cash out your stocks, you can get away, more importantly, you're, if you're a D Disney CEO and you resign, you can cash out your stocks, but also you can just leave the company. You know, like now, if now what happens? A pandemic, everything just gets destroyed. You can leave and someone else has to deal with all the mess and you don't have to deal with this. So to me, it showed the opposite. It doesn't mean they're getting arrested. Maybe it means they just wanted to get away from a collapsing country and a collapsing, uh, you know, company. I mean, when Bezos divorced his wife, they cashed out all their stocks. Like these, you, you get what I'm saying? It's like, they use this false psyop to be wrong about everything. The military's in control. No, the opposite is, is true. The military takes orders from whoever the top general is, and right now, the top generals are becoming Marxists and they hate you. A CEO stepped down because they're getting arrested. No, CEO stepped down and they're not getting arrested. They probably had foresight that something bad was gonna happen. Uh, you know, the lockdown is a secret plan, and then they say, no, I never said that when they said, what have they been right about? I don't, I, you know, it's like March 4th, there's a secret constitution, Trump's gonna be elected president on March 4th. That never happened. And the, the people that shamelessly push that narrative, they never admit that they did that. And same thing with January 20th. I, I've taken video clips of these people saying, I guarantee it's gonna happen, 10 out of 10, I'm 100% sure, and then it doesn't happen. At this point, I'm thinking to myself, who still follows them? Like, you gotta be really, no offense, dumb, or foolish or naive or egotistical to believe this stuff at this point. It's like, at what point? But I guess the same is like with, with the regular media, you know, like that's just where we're at in this country. So it's not like extra shocking when it happens on the right. All right, I'm gonna answer a few more and then I gotta roll out. Did anyone hear that AOC is a robot? I don't think she's a robot, but she has bad energy. She's always like bugging out. I, don't, I, I wouldn't call her a robot, but I've never heard that theory. That's hilarious though. No, I just think she's like, she's got bad, bad vibes. 
I'm gonna read this real quick. Someone said Trump did some great things, but Operation Warp Speed was not one. He became a vaccine salesman. He lost a lot of respect to me. And a lot of this stuff, I know this is like my least popular stuff to some, but maybe my most popular to others. I don't, I don't rail at Trump because I hate him. I, I say that because medical tyranny is the root cause of everything. If you're mad at the election, medical tyranny is what jump started mass mail in ballots. You know, the lockdown, the shutdown. All of this stuff's related. So if, if you have a blind spot for the medical tyranny uh, element of it, you, you, they're not going to conserve anything. They shut down the free market. All 50 states, uh, you know, I believe, or 49, I don't know how shut down South Dakota got, they shut down the free market. If you're a free market capitalist, conservative, whatever, you, you're not going to be able to conserve anything until you get to the root of a medical tyranny. And Trump was in on it. He did a little bit to fight against it, but he did more funding. When you fund ventilators, when you fund vaccines, when you fund mass testing and PCR tests everywhere, you're funding the infrastructure of big government medical tyranny. So you, you get what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean or rude, but when you have a conservative movement, let's say we have 150 million patriots. 50 million patriots are trusting a plan and military general operation trust. They're like, they look like Joe Biden. They're walking side to side. They don't even know where they're at right now. They, you know, the military says one thing and they say, oh no, they didn't, they don't hate Tucker Carlson. It's just a seat. So it's like 50 million people are just totally confused. And then you got, you know, maybe 80 million or 50 million who really like Trump. So they just want to give him some time and say, ah, no, I don't, he did his best. Now you have a movement of 150 million people. And when push comes to shove, nobody's standing up for themselves. You know, the, the people who get the most upset when I say that are the people who it uh, applies to. The people who don't get upset when I say that, people like Ian Smith, gym owner who stayed open, you know, people like uh, the owner of Basilico's restaurant who stayed open. When I say stuff like that, they're like, dude, I agree with you. Because no offense, they're real men who never gave in or didn't want to give in or at a certain point said, I'm not giving up my business or my gym. Those are the people, the people who get mad are the men who don't do anything. You know, the men who are waiting for Trump to do it. It's like, I'm not knocking Trump. I'm just saying, if he's not going to do it, you have to do it. You have to put your foot down. If you don't put your foot down and you're constantly waiting for him to put his foot down and he doesn't put his foot down, you just wasted a year of socialism, communism, and medical tyranny. And now all this stuff that Trump rolled out and all 50 states rolled out, it's going to be a lot harder to get rid of it because big government, when it expands, it very rarely shrinks. It's harder to um, get rid of. Someone said, what's this book? New Lies for the Old by Antony Golison. It's uh, an ex-KGB officer who warned about the communist deception that threatens the West. I read it at the beginning, but it's, uh, it's really fascinating. I mean, he talks about one of the main ways they were able to quash uh, dissent was through something called Operation Trust, which was military leaders faking and lying and pretending that there was a secret military strategy to retake the country. The same thing that, that Trust the Plan is doing. It's the same thing. Either it was a 4chan joke that went out of control or it's a concerted effort to neutralize the Trump and conservative movement and it's working magically. You have people who are now just growing and gain, gaining the biggest audiences on BitChute and Rumble and Instagram just constantly moving the carrot and saying, I'll stop if March 4th doesn't happen and March 15th happens. Don't worry guys, the military's in control. The military's in control of what? What's the military in control of? The military is in control of whoever's controlling it. And all the top brass right now, or most of them, are left-wingers. You know, Biden replaced anybody that Trump put in probably at this point. And now they're on Twitter trying to take down Tucker Carlson. That's what the military is doing. So either, you know, we, we adapt to it or we just fall by the wayside. And um, I want to say this too. It's like it reminds me of, and I've said this before, but I'll make it brief. It reminds me of like, if something's wrong, it's not the end of the world, but you have to make it right. If you're in denial that something's going on, how could you fix it? It's like if my stove is just filled with macaroni and cheese all over the place and it's dirty, and someone says, hey, Anomaly, I like you, but your stove is pretty dirty. You know, we should probably clean it. I'll you know what, I'll help you clean it. I'll help you clean your stove. A normal person would be like, thank you. You're right, my stove is dirty. I appreciate, a, a psycho would say, my, my stove's not dirty, are you kidding me? My stove's not dirty. I mean, it's dirty, but there's a military general. He's going to come to my house and he's going to clean it later. It's like, are you sure? Where'd you read that? I read it on a message board. 4chan. I read it on 4chan. And you're like, 
it's a, it's a, anybody can post on 4chan. So he, he showed the proofs. You've seen the proofs. Simon Parks told me. Simon Parks, the guy who says he was birthed by aliens, who has like intelligence community. I mean, come on. Have you listened to Charlie Ward? It's like, bro, what are you talking about? You got what I'm saying? It's like, in order to solve a problem, you have to admit it's there. They're taking 50, 60, 70 years of like Marxist infiltration in America, not addressing any of it, closing their eyes and just being like, man, uh, the military is going to say, how is the military going to save you? That's not even the military's job. The military's job is to fight wars and uh, harass Marjorie Taylor Greene, I guess, and, and, and Tucker Carlson, you know? The military's in control of whoever guides them into Iran or Iraq and Afghanistan. Like, the military's not like your, it, it's like a fantasy fairy tale for egotistical, narcissistic people. Like, oh man, I, I'm Batman, you're Superman, I'm Robin, and I'm just gonna sit in my computer chair and, you know, fantasize about like G.I. Joes. It's like, bro, are you five years old? These are grown men doing this? It's nuts. I, I can't believe it's still, and I'm reading the comments, more comments are starting to like turn it, they're like, bro, a week ago you told me that you were gonna quit if this didn't happen, and like, why are you so scared of Joe Biden taking your guns if the military's in control? None of these channels even make sense. They're like, Trump is in control and the Patriots are in control, but Joe Biden's gonna take your guns. How's he gonna take the guns if he's not the president? How's he gonna do that if they're in control? Because they're not in control, because these people are full of it. These are pathological liars at best. Uh, you know, something else far more nefarious at worst. Thank you, Sean, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I got like two more, three more minutes and then I'm gonna roll out. Thank you guys for being here. And um, I'm gonna keep this up. I apologize for the pause. I don't know what happened on YouTube, but I might upload this one to YouTube later if the YouTube one is a little shady and that's what it is. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this, but I've noticed, uh, you know, I just wanted to, every single thing, like I, I was just laughing to myself this week cause you know, I've been hearing the military's in control for years but really a couple months and then the, you see what the it's like everything these people say it's the opposite it's like dangling a carrot okay a rational reasonable conservative would be like the military is turning against conservatives and you know that seems like it might be a problem they're like oh no that's ignore what's happening it's on our side and it's like no they're, they're not you know they're on our side with our country but you get what i'm saying it's like everything they say is literally inverted it's like the perfect psyop I can't wait to read this full. I got I got new lies for the old. Let me see. What I got the Gulag Archipel. I got I got all the commie books. I've already you know, I got commie books on deck. I gotta stretch real quick. Thank you, Leah. I appreciate it. And uh, I have at the top, guys. If you haven't, my Telegram chat. Paulette, uh, yeah, my Telegram chat's at the top. I'll, I'll try to get a few more comments. And thank you guys for the stars, too. Someone said, oh, please stop your fear-mongering. Sure, the military's in control. Here's another straw man. Uh, I'm not fear-mongering. I'm not trying to make people afraid. But it's like, you guys, this is like the most frustrating part. Is you make up these lies. And then if somebody tells the truth, you say, oh, if you don't agree with me, you're a fear-monger. So if I don't believe that the military is in control of everything ever when they're clearly, literally not, and you're a complete liar, then I'm fear-mongering? You guys don't have a monopoly on hope. You guys think you have a monopoly on human trafficking, uh, saving kids from it, and you guys think you have a monopoly on hope. It's like, if I lie to people and say that you're, 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 your thing is filled with sherbet, if you just lick your wall, it's filled with sherbet, that doesn't, that, oh, thank you so much. And then I say, you know what? Actually, your wall's not sherbet. Oh, yeah, anomaly's fear-mongering again. My wall's not made of sherbet. Oh, yeah, way to make the kids unhappy. It's like, the wall's not made of sherbet, bro. That doesn't mean you're like the hope savior. It just means you're a liar. So making up fake fantasies and, and deceiving people like uh, Satan's little toy doesn't make you like a righteous hope warrior. It just makes you a phony. There's no fear going on here. It's like, you guys do these things where it's like, oh, the ship in Gu is in Guantanamo Bay. Did you see? And I'm like, where's your proof? And they're like, we zoomed in on a food bag. Okay, and that's your proof that that's happening? Do you have any other proof? Oh, you don't want the kids to be saved? Oh, you, you support that? It's like the straw man's never stopped with you guys. It's like, 
If, if people question your horrible, horrible predictions and horrible, horrible research. And one thing I have to say, one of the first red flags out of a thousand was back in like 2019. All of this stuff that Q is recycling, first of all, if you go to the original Q post, he gave a specific date for Hillary and was wrong. So it was based off fabrications from the beginning, mixed with like pseudo codes and fortune cookies. Oh, I'm gonna have a good day. Whoa, can you believe that? I had a good day in the fort. Yeah, they're speaking in codes with Socratic methoding. It's not, it's not that hard to be like 60% accurate when you're speaking in cookie fortune codes and you also convince your audience that disinfo is necessary. Do you guys not get it? Oh, he's right about a lot of things and when he's not right, he meant to be wrong because disinfo is necessary. If disinfo is necessary, how do you know what's real or not? Spoiler alert, you don't. You don't know anything. It's a brain scramble, folks. Disinfo is necessary, so half of it's real, but half of it's not. And only I know what's real, and Hillary can't figure it out. If you don't know what's real, Ellen doesn't know what's real. If you know what's real, they know what's real. If you know it, it's not a secret. So there is no secret plan. Don't you get it? It's like a five-year-old could understand this stuff. But, you know, I digress. Some wild, there's some wild wizardry going on. And it's not a black pill and it's not fear mongering. It's just like what a real man does at a certain point. It's like, I'm gonna use a simple uh, example again. If, um, if your house is messy, you gotta clean it, okay? It, if someone says you gotta clean it, it's not fear mongering. A real man or a real woman just cleans the house. So it's like, it's really like you guys are just cowards. It's like you're so afraid of facing reality that you find solace in a, in a fake lie and then you yell at anybody who tells you the truth. It's like, it's not the end of the world if you actually have to get up off your chair and, and, and contribute to American society. Like, yeah, it's a fun theory that the powder puff girls are gonna save my life and Trump's gonna wipe my butt and General Flynn's gonna like fly in a spaceship and, and arrest all the pedophiles. It's fun to like think, I don't know if you're like 12 years old, but you're, if you're a grown adult, at a certain point, it's not that scary to realize that it's not happening and you gotta do something. And I know that's why a lot of people are doing it because I was calling out this one guy on Twitter, Vincent Kennedy one time, and he basically was like straw manning everything. And I said, bro, look at the facts. And he was like, well, it's either what I think or we're doomed. And he admitted right there that he's a coward. If I don't hallucinate these fake theories, I'm scared. You know, we're doomed if it doesn't happen. So who's the real fear monger? It's like either lies or we're doomed. Those are not the only two options. That's like saying vote for Romney or vote for McCain. It's like, I, you could vote for whoever, but you're, it's not the solution. You know, it's like, you guys think just because you're too afraid to face reality that everyone else is a fear mo No, you're just a coward. You know, it's like, that's the answer I got from, uh, from one of these people. He said, I know what you're saying, but I don't want to consider it because if, you, if you're right and I'm wrong, we're all doomed. It's like, spoiler alert, you are wrong and we're not doomed. You're, you know, it's like, the projection, oh, you're a fear monger. No, it's like, it's so, it's so, it's so sneaky. You guys are so crafty with your sneakiness, the straw mans. But I have to tell you, I'm not the, I'm not the one, you're, you're not gonna, your wizard spells are not gonna work on me. You know, your little, your little psyops and your little sneaky like brain control tactics, they, they don't work on me, okay? All right, one more minute and then I'm out. Someone said, oh, I gotta clean after this live stream. Yeah, it's like self-accountability. We'll, we'll end on that note. Someone said, talk about how to fix the problem. Well, this is what I'm saying. Like ideologically, to fix the problem, people have to stop thinking someone else is gonna fix it for them. It's like, it's basic like psychology, spirituality 101. You listen to Tony Robbins or Eckhart Tolle or Gary Vee or whoever, okay? You know, Dave Ramsey. It's like none of these people tell you, oh, someone's gonna do it for you. That's, that's 101 to lead people to failure. It's, it's so much bigger than even politics. Like that brainwashing tactic that Q is using is the same one that, that liberals use to tell you know, minorities that everybody's after them and like someone else will do something for them. No, that's the worst thing. It also, it, the solution is what I'm talking about, self-accountability. It's like, no one's gonna save you and that's not the end of the world. It's the same thing, you know? No one's gonna make you rich. No one's gonna make you successful. 
No one's gonna save America. If, if you're waiting for someone to do it, it's never gonna happen, and you waiting is gonna be the reason it never happens. And if tens of millions of people are waiting, it's never gonna happen. If tens of millions of people actually realize that they are the change they need to see in the world, and Trump and General Flynn and McEnroy or whatever his name is aren't gonna save them, it's that simple, it's that easy, and it's peaceful, it's calming, it's not scary, it's not fearful, it's just real. So that that is the bigger solution, like on a personal level, you gotta do what you gotta do. Your family, yourself, that's, that's on a personal level. On a community level, that's on you and your community, and everything that you do can help on a bigger scale in your community. And then on a, on a national scale, if you have a movement where 70% of people are tapped out because they're following this method that everyone else is gonna save them, and literally though it never happens, they just keep going on. What are you gonna be, 80 years old and waiting for the plan? It's like, and then when something finally happens, you're like, see, I told you. It's like, yeah, good things are gonna happen, bad things are gonna happen. You don't need to create a false religion around it. You know, I have more respect for, I'm not even gonna say, but in general, uh, you know, that is, that is the solution. It's like if enough people just did even a little bit, it would have been over already. But I think that's, you know, our culture is, everybody's looking for the microwavable solution. Food tastes worse than the microwave, but it's easy and convenient and it doesn't take that long. If you cook it in the oven, it takes longer, but it tastes better. So who wants to put in the work? How do you get stronger? Do you take a pill? That's the cue. That's the Trump has a plan in the military. It's the pill. Oh, I'm 300 pounds and if I take this pill, I'll lose 100 pounds. No, you won't. You know, you have to work out, you have to eat, and you have to be consistent. It sucks, but that's just what it takes. You know, so all these people are saying I'm cleaning as we speak. It's like, even me saying that made people clean. You know, I cleaned the other day, but it's like, you know, that's how quickly things can change if you change your attitude and your mindset. But it's like, you're not gonna get skinnier by taking a pill magically, and there's no magic plan to save the country. It's like hard work, dedication, and everybody making moves. If everybody was as strong as you know, gym owners who kept their businesses open, this would have been over in April. And if everybody was trusting the plan, we, we'd still be where we are. You get what I'm saying? That's not a solution. So what is the solution? What you don't wanna hear, that no one's coming to save you. And that goes for anything. You listen to any financial expert, they're not gonna tell you someone's gonna save you, they're gonna tell you no one's coming to save you. If you listen to any spiritual expert or you know mental health expert, they're gonna tell you the same thing. You gotta stop waiting for everyone else to, to change your life, it's gotta be you. It's the same thing, it's the same. That's why even with politics, when I came in, yeah, I'll weigh in on certain stuff, but at the core of left and right, it's all common sense, it's all basic like mindset. And if you can control someone's mind, if you could brainwash them with fake social justice on the left wing, if you could brainwash them with trust, operation trust on the right wing, you have a politically incompetent, uh, you know, two sides where adults don't wanna take any accountability. And we have, in our country, we have an opioid problem, we have an obesity problem, we have a mental health problem, that's why I'm, I'm writing my book, I know I've been saying that, but I've really been focusing on it the last week, that's why I haven't done as many videos, it should be done way sooner than normal, but it's like, at the core of it, that's really all it is. If people, you know, we can't, or, or in general, like, oh, you're this, you're that, like, no, I'm, I'm not following these agencies and these, uh, you know, experts and these, these industries that have created these obesity and pill problems in our country, like, I'm not, anti this or anti that, I've just seen the devastation they've caused by convincing people that someone will save them because it's politically and financially advantageous for them. If everybody wants to take all these pills, we'll make a lot of money. And if people actually worked out and took care of their brains, the media would be out of business and so would a lot of these pharmacy companies. So it's like the tough answers is not scary. And I just have to say, um, everybody who tries to say this, it's just a straw man argument. Either you agree with my lie that there's a magic quick solution and it's all being happened behind the scenes of the military when it's not, or you know, you're, you don't believe in, uh, you're a fear monger. There's, not, there's nothing scary about it. You know, it's actually very calming. Someone said, you just became like those celebs you dislike, bro. You, I find it interesting and I really do have to go. Um, you've been here the whole time. You know, you've been complaining for 40 minutes, you've been here the whole time, but when, when I open the floor to you, and anybody really, um, first of all, you can say whatever, but if you disagree with something I'm saying, just, just tell me what you say. I find that most time people do that, they just say, you're this, you're that. What part of what I said hurt you? Show me on the doll, where, like, 
what what part of it? I'm, I'm willing to have a discussion. I'm willing to have a conversation, but you see what I did with this live stream. I know the tactics they use because I've taught, I've debated them. I've got messages for three years and it's the straw man of making up a fake argument on the side, the character assassination of you're a horrible person uh, and then no evidence or any sort of logical argument to the side about the content of what I'm actually saying. While I speculated on what I think people are thinking in their heads when they push this disinformation, I didn't just sit here and say, oh, these people are terrible, they're horrible, they're liars, and then get off the stream. If I did that, I would expect no one to believe me because that's not a discussion. I went through everything that they've said. I went through how this has been used in the past, and I went through the mindset of why I think it's a, 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 a trap you know, ideologically and what it has done to the movement. Not push back about, against Operation War Speed, not really push back that hard against the, uh, the lockdowns, and not really hold Trump accountable when it would have been a smart play to do because he is actually more reasonable, he's more movable. His son, you know, he just shared an article with my, with my uh, tweet in it about, about Fauci and Kerry Mullis. It's like, that family has a pulse. Biden, not so much. So, it, you know, it, we can't go back in the past, but that's, you know, I've, I've broken down all the reasons that I, I think that it wasn't a good idea. I'm not just out here slandering and smearing people. And even with like, you know, people like uh, Lynn Wood and stuff, I could just be like, yeah, he's a horrible person. I don't think he's a horrible person. I don't, I don't know what his intentions are, but I could, I'm not just going to sit here and try to character assassinate him because I, I think genuinely he probably means well, you know, and I, I think some of what he says is valid. But when I see someone just kind of start spewing, somebody said it's like throwing you know, crap against the wall and seeing if it sticks, at a certain point it becomes that, where you're just throwing so much stuff, like yeah, a lot of it's gonna be true, a lot, but that, to me, that's not really impressive. I mean, I guess a little bit, but you know, I, in a world that's so dishonest, in a world that's so, so, so many people are sloppy, you know, people want something more real. Like with Tucker Carlson, I can't say I always agree with his takes, but I agree with most of them because Tucker, he really calculates what he's saying and he actually says things that need to be said that no one else is saying and he's able to find the truth tellers on the left there's not many but he finds them and gets them on to share their perspective so it's like people like tucker carlson because he's not just spewing everything against the wall tucker carlson doesn't just take his poop and throw it against the wall so he's like you know trying to be really accurate and i think uh that's why he's the highest rated person on television and same with me i'm not i don't i'm not here for any other reason besides I was underwhelmed by the accuracy rating and I, if I'm gonna call them fake news, I don't wanna be fake news. I mean, that's called a hypocrite, left wing or right wing. You know, the media's fake news, true. So shouldn't I be accurate? Shouldn't I, why, why would it be impressive if I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm okay, yeah, I'm better than them, but I lie, I have to, it's like, that's not cool. You know, to, you have to, and that's what no one wants to do, I think at the end. Like if I wanna, if I don't like the media, I became a media, but if I start to lose my accuracy, I'm gonna become the exact problem I hated. And I think that's the long-term solution that nobody wants to hear, which is like the most basic spiritual principle. Be the change you wanna see in the world. And everybody's hypocritical, not everybody, but it's like no one wants to do that. Everybody wants to just get emotional or just, it's like, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm blessed with years of doing this and I've learned a lot and I, I, I kind of get how to formulate stuff. But in general, I'm like, I don't want to be that person who's posting fake stuff all the time. You know, I don't want I don't want to do that. So point I'm getting to is with other people, I see them doing that a little more. I don't hate them. I don't think they're terrible people, but I'm not going to I think too many people are idolizing these people, idolizing people who are not worthy of idol, idolizing. And I'm not worthy of it either. You know, I think if anything, I want to inspire people to be able to learn better and, and educate themselves and get it on their own. So if I'm not here or if my, they're not watching my videos, they're able to take certain things I've said and, and use it to filter through other information for themselves. That's what I want, you know, that would be a nice goal for here. But, you know, I think the, the idol worship of people, Trump, Lynn Wood, QAnon, who you don't even know who they are, like that's, that's the problem. It's not them, Q and... Mike Lindell and, you know, uh, Lynn Wood, if everybody didn't like cling on to their words like the Bible, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. But, you know, that's what I think it is. Everybody's looking for a hero, uh, but you are the hero in your story. You know, I think that's, we'll end on that note, is you got to be the hero. Hopefully someone helps you every now and then Trump or somebody will probably throw you a bone and, and help you out a little bit. But in this story, 
you know, I don't know that anyone's going to save you as far as like a human being, a God and, and stuff, that's a different story. But as far as like a human, you know, I don't think anyone's coming to save you. I don't think the, uh, the military has a secret plan to do everything that you ever want them to do. That's kind of like a selfish thought. I don't know, like it's all this bad stuff's happening in the world. So I'm just gonna assume that the military is gonna do it all even though it didn't ever happen. It's like just guys, come on. Uh, that's what I think. Thank you guys, God bless you. God bless your family, God bless America, God bless the world, have a good day. And I'll upload this to YouTube. Something went sour, I'm not quite sure, um, but it is what it is at this point. Have a good day. And uh, t.me slash chat is my Telegram chat. I appreciate everyone there. And then also um, stayintouchwithme.com is my free email list. All right, take care.